What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Python 3 Basics tutorial video. In this video, what we're going to be talking about is multi-dimensional lists. So all the lists that we've covered so far have been a singular dimension, right? So there's just for each um, bit of data in the list, it's only one bit of data. But actually you can have lists within lists, uh, within lists, within lists if you want. You can go as deep as you want. You can get very uh, convoluted fast. Um, so anyway, what we're going to be showing today is a two-dimensional list, and then you could take it from there if you so chose. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, let's say we have a list, and right now, like a typical list, don't forget your square brackets. Let's just say we have uh, that. Can't get away from these massive numbers. This is our list for now, okay? Uh, and in fact, let's make that shorter, otherwise I'm going to cry. So we have this list right now. So we've got a 5, a 6, a 6, and a 2. Let's just make this a 7 and a 2. Um, so what we can do now, this is a one-dimensional list. But what we can do is we can make it a two-dimensional list. So each element in this list is just actually another list. So 5 and 6, and then we have a 6 and a 7, and then a 7 and a 2, and then a 2 and a 5. Anybody see what I did there? Probably not. Anyway, continuing on. Um, so now we have a two-dimensional list. So for one, we can just print X, save and run that. Apparently, it's, this is uh, really challenging. There we go. OK, so here's our list. Now, uh, let's say we want to print the first fifth element here. It's a 6 and a 7. Now, what if we wanted to go even deeper? Well, we can go deeper uh, using the same sort of syntax. So we can say we want the first element or the 0 with element, which will be hopefully a six, right? We have six, seven. The first of that is a six. Save and run it, and we get a six. So that's how we can reference that. Now we could go even further, right? So this is a two-dimensional list. We could take this even further and say, like these numbers here, this could be a list as well, and then we could have another list here, um, then another list. Uh, let me make sure I've done this right. <laughs> this gets messy very fast. Yeah, which is what I'm about to talk about here. Um, six, six, and then seven, eight. Um, we'll leave it like that for now. We don't actually have to go further. Let me make sure that's a valid list. Okay. So, um, so this printed. Now you can see this is you know two elements. So let's say you know you want to go even further. Well, obviously we still can go further. So the zero with the zero with, again a six. Now, as you can see, you know, just typing this out was a, kind of a pain. Also, just visually looking at it, it's kind of a pain to look at this. Uh, so what you can do when you make big lists like this is, um, see, like with Python, we don't have to have very nice standards necessarily all the time. It kind of, Python, like, forces us into having standards. So as a programmer, you maybe forget the fact that you might need to program your own standards. And again, what I mean by standards is the organization of all the text here. So but what you can do with lists, tuples, um, well, really a whole bunch of stuff, but mostly you're going to do it with lists, is you can do the following. You can hit Enter. And now this is the, you know, I'm pointing to the screen. You can't see that. <laughs> uh, so like this is our, our opening bracket. And then we might as well put our closing bracket right down there as well. And then this is our second bracket here. And if you ever want to know, um, you know, what each bracket corresponds to, uh, you can kind of you can do this. Oops! You can delete and add it, and you can see how it highlights everything. That's kind of how you know like what that bracket corresponds to. So if you're used to like, like say you code in like uh, Notepad plus plus, this sometimes it does it automatically for you if you like highlight the little bracket, especially at curly braces. Say you're programming, I don't know PHP or something. You highlight them, and it kind of corresponds. So if you ever want to know like what bracket that is, or if you've actually closed everything, you could just do that. Um, so anyway. Then we can see, you know, these are their own little pair, and then this is a group here. And then you can either put the commas at the bottom, or I like to leave them at the end, like this. Um, I'm pointing to the screen again, you can't see. <laughs> like this at the end here, because uh, you can go like this, and then everything is nice and organized. And then do it one more time. This didn't have any lists within a list, so it's not as pretty and organized, but you get the idea. Um, so we can still run this, though. And Python, you know, still deals with it and handles it just like you would hope. Um, and then here, let me show you that. We'll run it. 
same thing. So you can add spaces and it's okay. So if you you know if you're kind of OCD about making everything look pretty, um, you can get away with it. <laughs> So anyway, uh, that's just some ex an example of multi-dimensional lists. Again, you can go as deep into this as you want, and it just helps to organize. God, I just keep pointing at the screen. <laughs> I need to, like a camera behind me so you guys can see what I'm pointing at. Um, you can organize it like this, and obviously, as you get more and more dimensions, it's going to get almost impossible, right? Because your screen is, you know, still only two dimensions. So <laughs> as soon as you get past a two-dimensional list, you're kind of screwed again. But Anyway, uh, it does help to kind of organize it a little bit. So that's going to conclude uh, this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.